Hi. So I need to do a little quick video to just explain the whole confusion of the past two weeks. Um, it's been confusing for everybody and I want to clear things up and apologize to all the people because I'm sorry, it, it's complicated. But first, can we look at this thing? I could play it around with the makeup just to show off this new highlighter that I got. And then I was like, well, since I look cute, let's just tell people what's, what's, what's up. Because let's start off with that I'm okay. I'm going to be just fine. Just fine. It was crazy misunderstanding. But first, this is the highlight that I got. I found it on Amazon.ca. It's less than $5. And you get 6 grams of product. And I can never open these things because I have no nails. Alright, got it. You get 6 grams. I don't know if you can see it. Does it remind you of anything famous? Uh, yeah, but I mean... I really hope this camera can pick it up, but I did take a selfie. Oh no! I took a selfie! Okay, so it totally shows up in there, and I mean, whoa. I don't know. I think I look great, but who cares? Anyway, it was for myself. So let's talk about the whole kerfuffle that was the past couple of weeks. So, yes, I have borderline personality disorder. And when emotions get too high, I, I lose it. Now, I've been taking my DBT classes and I'm doing amazing. My life has changed so much. People around me, you know, work everywhere has all, they've all noticed the difference and I've noticed the difference. However, I lost it this time. Those, those skills were, were, they were in play because I'm still here. I'm still whole, you know, but it was really, really close. And unfortunately it was for a reason that isn't easy to talk about, but I, I'm, I'm going to say it. I don't feel like I should hide things and I've never been allowed to say these things publicly. Um, so, and again, so even though I lost my cool and I told everybody to go where and how and how, like it, I'm sorry. All right. And the fact that I have borderline personality disorder is not an excuse. It doesn't make it okay. However, it still happened. And I feel like the biggest dumbass in the world. And I've apologized to all the people. And thankfully, you know, they've accepted and understood. But still, it's embarrassing and humiliating. Which is why I'm going to tell you what happened. So, I got some information from social development. It happens. And do I understand everything that goes on there? No. No. And I'm used to having someone in my life that does understand and steps in, you know, in these. And when I get too frustrated, you know, I, I yell at people. I don't understand correctly, you know, it, and it doesn't get me anywhere. And I'm used to this person stepping in at those times and making sense of everything. For whatever reasons, it didn't happen this time. That person didn't act and react as they have in the other 34 something years of my life. You know, other people have things to go through. You know, I'm, I'm not the only person that has life issues. And maybe, I don't know, I'm not going to make assumptions, but we're just going to stick with the facts. That this time that person 
did not step up like they're used to. So that one was, that was confusing for me. It was, it was, it was usually just like, you know, a one phone call. And yes, this could have all been fixed with one phone call. Way in the beginning. But for some reason, it wasn't handled the way that it always was. So I was confused about why, you know, me and that person wasn't happening. But I couldn't understand what these people as in social development were telling me because that person that I rely on all the time was giving me the information about how things work and what we're supposed to do and what things mean and whatnot. And they've never let me astray before. They've always been right. They've always known. They've been my biggest supporter. But this time, and again, for whatever reason that I don't know, they had the wrong information. So they were telling me something. And I've always trusted that person. Never had a reason not to. So for two weeks, I was, you know, at that cliff moment. Because I was so confused. Because I thought that social development was against me. That they had some kind of like inside deal. And they were trying to screw me over and ruin my life. And I couldn't wrap my head around it. Like, why would they want to do that to someone? The thing is, is that they don't. They weren't. I was getting information that was different from what they were trying to tell me. And I was trusting that my information was correct. So, you know, it, it made a big conflict in my mind. Couldn't wrap my head around, like, which one is right? I don't get it. And usually, again, when I'm that confused, you know, it's kind of like Jesus take the wheel, but that person takes the wheel. And that person did not take the wheel. In fact, it kind of was a, the opposite, which again was weird and strange and but I'm I'm learning uh so on Monday I made my way to the emergency room to check myself in because I just could not handle life now in my case I'm, I'm thankful that I, I'm, I'm at that place and my doctor also knows that so I had called the office to say that I was going to go in so I think that's why he stuck around. Either way, I'm, I'm glad he was there. He's the person I spoke to. And so for me personally, the thought of like ending my life, it pops up all the time. Because that's a borderline personality thing. That's where the person who invented DBT, which is a therapy for borderline personality disorder, realized that there was something different with certain people. They would always, you know, try to commit suicide or, or you know, do it or, or whatever. In my case, I fought so hard and so long to get to where I am today that I'm, I'm not going down without a fight. I'm not saying that that it will never ever happen in my life because I don't know what's going to be in the future. But I can definitely tell you that that's, if that's ever an avenue that I go down, then life was hella hard. Um, a lot of the things that I've gone on through my life, only personal, you know, close people really know the true story and it doesn't need to be public. It doesn't need to be said. However, some of it might be public again. I was not allowed to speak about a lot of things for all these years. And now I don't care if that person ever speaks to me ever again because I made that decision to never have that person in my life. So, again, this goes back to Monday when I tried to go to the hospital. Well, I did go. I called the person and asked them to come with me for support. Emotional support, you know. I mean, I, I thought I was going to be waiting for like 16 some hours because usually that's the case. I mean, you know, I wasn't in, 
an emergency situation where like, you know, blood was pouring out of me and I was going to die in five seconds. So I really thought the wait was going to be really long. So I asked that person to come along with me and very, very reluctantly, they're like, fine, I'll get dressed and go. And that hurt. I didn't understand. Like, I'm not important. So that whole time was just ripping at my heart the whole time. They they sat next to me and it you could just if it was like a cartoon, you could have seen the fumes coming out of that person's ears. They were just angry and pissed that they were there. And they got angry again that I wore these that I wear these rings on on my wedding, you know, I'm not married. So what? Who cares? I think they're pretty. I like to wear them. It doesn't matter to anybody. But apparently this is a big issue. And it's all those little tiny little things that, I don't know, exploded. I don't know what happened. But I, f I got in to see the doctors and everything that I have been saying for years and years and years, trying to say that I just keep getting either told I can't say or people just don't believe me, happened in public, in front of the psych nurse and the intern. So I don't feel good that that was validated because it wasn't a good experience. However, mental health has known for, for years and years that, you know, this relationship is not exactly the best one. And until then, and my doctor obviously knows as well, because he gets that information, they pass it up. So, but he's always left it up to me, you know. If I wanted to try to do what I could, I, it was all right. And I've been trying, and in a sense, it looked like it was going in a great direction, but it was going in a, in a great direction because... I was sacrificing who I was, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to say and everything just to keep things, you know, kosher. And I knew I was going great with my life. Things were going in such a positive way. Everything is going how I need it to go. But on the inside, I, I saw alone and I was extremely depressed but happy at the same time and it turns out because again after the whole psych nurse thing happened my doctor came in and, and we spoke and that person is unfortunately the reason why i feel that way in the backside and he told me for once and for all that for my own mental health we have to separate. And at that time, because this isn't the first time that I've tried to do that or whatnot, you know. But at that time, I was ready. And I am now. It's not an easy decision and it took me years to get here. But he told me, you know, that person has to be out of your life. You know, you and then he encouraged me. He told me all the positive things, and because he's been my doctor for like 15 years now, I think, or or whatnot. So he's seen me go from the bottom of the barrel to where I am now, and and the in betweens. And he told me that he was proud of me and happy, but I have to let that person go because that's the last, you know part and I was okay with that so at the time there was anger and and whatever actually I don't know there you go borderline personality disorder I'm not quite sure what emotion I had but it was overwhelming and it was a lot but after I spoke to my doctor after I spoke to everything and I got it out I finally said I was no longer in that place where, like, you know, life was... No. It was this feeling of empowerment of, you know what? I can do this. 
I'm strong enough. I'm ready. I, I can go, you know. I'm a bird jumping out of the nest with my wings. So by the time the doctor was in there, you know, he knew the whole thing. I mean, obviously, they all talked to each other. And that person tried to corner him before he came into the room to talk to me. So, anyway. Um, I was okay. And I was just like, you know what? I want to go home. And I just want to, like, veg out on my couch and sleep for, like, three days. And, you know, watch movies. And he said, yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. So that's what I did. Now, for me, horror movies are hilarious. I mean, can I deal with people getting killed and, and hurt in real life? Heck no. Not at all. Let's not go along with American Sniper. Actually, let's explain my joke about American Sniper. So, if you don't know what the movie is, like, Google it. You'll know what it's about. And I have the movie network, so it kind of was on TV, so I started watching it, not knowing anything about it. And... Whether people believe in, like, being empaths or not, that's up to your thing. But I tend to feel other people's emotions. And if movies are well done, which is kind of why they win Oscars and whatnot, that emotion in the movie gets portrayed. So I was feeling the emotions. And it's roughly a story about one of the best snipers they ever had in the U.S. Army and how he comes home and fights through the PTSD that he got from, you know, everything he saw. And I have chills thinking about it. He fought through that and became himself again, became a husband, became a father. And he also helped other veterans deal with PTSD. And at the end, and I'm going to ruin it. So if you don't want to know the end of it, stop watching or fast forward 10 seconds. He brings someone to the range because this is how he would help other veterans with their PTSD. He would bring them to the range and they would just shoot guns and like kind of talk, whatever, you know, in your own environment. Sometimes you're a little more comfortable. And one day he brought a veteran to the range to help him out. And it turns out that that veteran shot him and killed him. So at that point in the movie, I am an emotional wreck. And then the thing starts scrolling, and then I realize it's a true story. I lost it. Whew, still now. That emotion is still there. That was... Wow. So now when movies come on that um, could potentially bring on those emotions, I Google the plot of the movie and read it <laughs> before. And that's mostly why I stick to horror movies. Because horror movies, one, I know they're not real. So I laugh at them. I mean, seriously. If there's somebody in your house with a knife and he's or, or a gun or, and they're trying to kill you, like, running upstairs, and these are all the jokes in the screen movies, but they're true. Running up the stairs is not what a natural person would do. All these, they're all, you know, I know it's not real. If I saw any of this in real life... I would probably fall apart. You know, I, I can't kill, like, the spiders in my apartment. I, I put them in Ziploc containers and take them outside so they can live with their family. I know that's not true, but whatever. They don't have a family. Not my point. I've seen Charlotte's Web, okay? But, so I came home relaxed. I did a couple of videos actually with my DBT skills where I show everybody how to fix a vacuum. I happened to be fixing my vacuum that day anyway. Why not film it? So now I'm doing the things with my life that I want to do. And I've never been happier. I mean, I don't want to downplay the role that person had in my life. Not at all. I'm just saying that at this point in my life where I'm at and where that person is at, this was the right step for me. And I have to look out for myself in the end. I'm still here for all of you, okay? I, I'm still getting people asking questions. I'm still helping the support. That's okay, because we're all kind of supporting everybody in its a little community. I don't know. 
bunch of unicorns. We all help each other. That's great. But I have to end this with the fact that my doctor was serious enough about it to write a handwritten note. And his handwriting's terrible. Because <laughs> um, the doctor, I think there's a class in like doctor school on how to like write horribly. I don't know. To my mental health worker that I saw on Thursday. To explain again how I need to distance and you know move on with my life without that person in there because it's only what's best for me and when I walked in I already had that in mind so it wasn't a huge jump for me to accept that and, and go along with it and whatnot but the surprising part was that you know I was trying to logically say if this had not happened maybe I would still be talking to that person and their answer was no, it was eventually going to happen no matter what. And, you know, all the people that are, are there for me, you know, mental health, psychiatrists, whatnot, they know, they've known that this date was coming. They didn't know when or how, but they let me kid myself into thinking that I could fix it. And it's not a place, I guess, that can be fixed. And it's okay now. I've accepted that. I'm okay. I'm going to be perfectly fine. So, when it comes to the social development stuff, nothing is wrong. And I feel so dumb because I yell at them. I really did yell at them. I call them the meanest things ever. I, I was, oh my gosh, I, I can't. Oh, I was really bad. For no reason. Because they were actually trying to help me. But because I was still believing what the information that I was getting, that they were, you know, no, they're still helping me. Nothing has changed. There's just a little teeny weeny word wise designation, but it doesn't change anything financially for me. Like I thought it would. I thought I was going to have nothing from the difference from them. There is. The only thing that that meant was that for those two months, I went over my money. Agreed. However, they knew, they knew the whole time that it wasn't going to be a reoccurring thing. And they weren't holding that against me, which I thought they were because I was told that they were going to. So no, every month, same thing as it was before. I have a limited amount of money that I can make through my job, which is $500. If I don't go over my $500, they're still going to help me just like they always did before. So my budget wise doesn't change. So no, I am not going to be homeless. I get to live in this place. And maybe it's falling apart. You know, it needs some help, but whatever. I don't care. I've been here long enough and I'm starting to decorate it with all my colorings that I do. It's my home. This is where I am. I can afford it. I'm happy. You know, I don't need a million dollars worth of things. I don't need fancy stuff. Even though I look fancy. But trust me, okay? Five dollar highlight. I'm cheap. I guess. I don't know. Whatever. No shame in that. But nothing changes. And I freaked out for two months and made everybody jump through hoops. Made everybody that cares about me worry if I was, you know, for no reason. Because... Some other people in my lives, I don't know. And that's for them to do their own thing. I'm going to do me. And me is going to be perfectly fine. So, with that, actually the thank yous. But first I'm going to say the sorries. So again, sorry to social development. Sorry to my mental health worker. Sorry to anybody out there that... I told off that I yelled at. Sorry for putting up the first video yelling at them that made no sense. What can I say? I was working with what I had. Turns out it was wrong. I didn't know that until it was presented in the manner from it was. So now I understand that. It happened. Let's move on. Never happen again. And then I'm going to thank people. I'm going to thank the same people that I'm apologizing to. Because they didn't give up on me. 
Not only did social development not give up on me, they accepted my apology. They're not mad at me. They're not holding it against me. I don't need to change any caseworker because I thought I, I should because I thought they were. No, we're staying with the same people. They're still there. Um, Kuwait is still there. Sorry, I forgot. I have to apologize to them because I yelled at them too. Um, things are going to be worked out there. I'm going to get, I think, three hours. We're splitting it up. Three hours with Jessica, who I had before. And then three hours with Megan, depending on the schedule. But again, I'm, I'm wide open, I'm, you know, except for one afternoon where I go to my classes. And we can work around that. And it happens that they are the two that help me. I'm not saying anything bad about all the other workers out there. But just for what I need, they're the ones that do. And this is kind of like a double bonus that it happens out this way that they can do that. Because Jessica and Megan bring two different things to my life. Jessica is the best helping me organize, put things together, budget, put all that stuff. She helps me understand the things that I don't understand, like value of a dollar. I'm starting to get that. And that's something that I've never had before. So they're helping me with that. But then Megan, on the other hand, is who I go to the stores with and do the shopping. And she's very good at saying, like, are you sure you need that? Because sometimes, you know, it's on sale and I want it, but I don't have the budget, you know. She's good at, at just, and that's all I need sometimes is just someone to be there and say, like, like, check. Do you need this? And sometimes, you know, she'll help me figure it out because it just happens that it's something that I do want and that I, I do kind of need and it happens to be at a really good price. So she helps me look through my budget of maybe we can toss things around in order to afford that thing now that it's at a good price. Because, you know, can I buy Kleenex next week? You know, those kinds of decisions. So... Thankfully, I'm, I'm getting the best of, both, best of both worlds. And Mel's back. Thank God. I mean, I'm glad that she got to go home and see her family. And, you know, I, I'm, I hope that she gets better. I mean, her eye, I think, is getting better. I, her mom, I mean, I, I think of her every day. She was not well. And let's just hope she gets recovery. And let's just pray for her. And, you know, but Mel's back. So... I get my person to vent to my little things that I couldn't get out. But again, I'm not, I'm not going to need her in that manner as much anymore because I'm no longer restricted on what I can say. I can be me. I can say what I want now. There's no outside consequences to being who I want to be and doing what I want to do. Now, I understand that that's not everybody's cup of tea and that's fine. It doesn't have to be that person that I'm speaking of in particular's cup of tea. I get it. My life is different. I'm odd and I'm weird and I like it. But, and this is a worldwide problem, okay? There's a lot of things that, you know, some people don't like. So you don't talk about those things with those certain people. That's okay. But you still shouldn't judge other people for doing something that they like. And in this case, I was, I was being judged whether they wanted to or not. It was still just happening in a negative way. So, again, that's all gone. And I, I spoke to, you know, other people that are there and about it. And they're happy. They're confident. And that person actually told me that it sounds, I sounded on the phone. Like I had like a 50-pound weight lifted off of me. And I do. I'm ready for life. I'm ready for going out there. So my last, again, my thank yous um, to everybody that had kind words of support, you know, not publicly inside, between me and you, that's okay, nobody needs to know. And then I want to thank my work. They are above and beyond amazing at understanding everything. They were not mad, they were actually very supportive, and when I was in the place where I was misunderstanding everything... They were also mad for me, you know. They were ready to go. So, I'm going to be fine with them. I And I know, you know, I, do, I can't go over 500 with my paycheck. 
And I have all the confidence in the world that they are going to work with me on that. Because there are some times where, you know, they need a lot of people. And I'm signed up for at least 13 hours a week, no more than that. Simply because in the time where it's not that busy, well, my extra three-hour shift on a Thursday night, maybe they need someone on Thursday night, but they don't need them on the weekend. So I can get my three hours. But when it's super busy, I mean, I don't have to explain it. I just know that work's going to work with me because they care. They really care as an individual, as a person. And I'm not the only person they care about, by the way. There's been somebody else that worked with us that unfortunately passed away a while back. And it's still something that, you know, the supervisors still feel about. Because we are a family. We are, lo we are loved. We are one big thing. And, you know, everybody cares. And it's such an amazing feeling to go to a job where they're like... I'm so glad you're here today. Not for me to give them anything, just because they like that I showed up because they just like my presence. Wow. I mean, amazing. The last person that needs a big shout out is my little sister. We haven't always seen eye to eye. That's okay. We both grew up. We both changed. She's a mom now. She has two beautiful children. You know, you keep learning. Life keeps going. And um, on a whim, I called her just to be able, just to vent, not to ask for anything. But boy, was she mad. <laughs> she was ready to walk in there and, like, kill Bill Volume 2 everybody in there. She was mad. And... I think this is, you know, we're both adults now, and for the first time in this time of me getting better, we're finally on the page where she understands, and that's great. Now, again, it's not an excuse to things, and she'll call me out on it, which is fine, but she also understands that if I panic for something, it's not because, you know, I chose to, and, like... Other people would tell me to just stop thinking about it. If anybody out there has anxiety or has any... Actually, you don't have to have an anxiety disorder to sometimes not be able to stop thinking about something that bothers you. So telling somebody to just stop thinking about it is not going to solve anything. In fact, it's probably going to make them angry. So, that's it. Thanking everybody in my life. Thanking my sister. So my sister's name Mel and my best friend's name Mel. If you might get them confused, I'm sorry, but whatever. Ask. Tell the difference. Um, yeah. I'm going to be fine. I'm confident. I'm okay. And I'm really sorry I freaked everybody out. I'm, I freaked myself out. But I'm mostly sorry that I freaked all of you out. But it's a new day. We're going in positive directions. We're going in the right direction. And yeah. I'm really happy. I'm proud of myself for standing up on my own two feet for the first time. I don't know. Life's great. Thanks, everyone.